Taiwan's biggest company, Foxconn, is a multinational electronics assembly giant. I profiled the company in an earlier video. You can watch it first if you want to get the lowdown on this company before moving on to this particular topic. Foxconn draws the majority of its employees from China, so that is what I spent most of that video talking about. But in doing so, I could not spend more time on Foxconn's efforts abroad. The reality is Foxconn has over 200 subsidiaries around the world. The company has factories in Hungary, Slovakia, Turkey, and so on. But its manufacturing headquarters for the Europe, Middle East, and Africa regions, EMEA is called, are located in Czechia. It is the company's most important European site and the hub for its electronics exports into the European Union. In this video, I want to talk about how Foxconn came to the Czech Republic and how it adapted its militaristic labor style to the European way of working. But first, I want to take the time to ask you to subscribe to the Asianometry newsletter. Yes, once more. I want to call out some of the more popular email newsletters that have come out before. Many people liked the explainer on TSMC. A few others really enjoyed my recounting of the history of the Hakka people. You can go check them out on the site. They're great reads. You can find the link to the newsletter in the video description below, or you can just go to asianometry.com. You can expect a new newsletter every four days at 1 a.m. Taiwan time. Much thanks. Czechia, or the Czech Republic, is a landlocked country in Central Europe with a population of about 10 million people. It is a large hilly country about the same size as Ireland or the United Arab Emirates. The lands of what is now the Czech Republic have been populated for centuries. After World War I, Czechoslovakia emerged from the breakup of Austria-Hungary. But the country was then occupied by the Germans in World War II, and then the Communist Party after that. The country left communism after the fall of the Soviet Union, and then split into Czechia and Slovakia after the Velvet Revolution. Today, Czechia is a democracy with a developed, export-oriented market economy. Foxconn is one of Czechia's largest companies alongside automobile maker Skoda Automobile and conglomerate Agrofert. On a personal note, I visited Prague back in 2017, and I have to say, Czechia is such a beautiful country. I still have fond memories of the city and countryside, and I highly recommend that you watch an older video in this very channel about the Czech Koipus. It is without doubt the best video I ever made and needs more views. All right, back to Foxconn. The company made its first entrance in 2000. They began by purchasing factory and land in the city of Pardubice, a city of 92,000 located about 10 kilometers outside of Prague. They paid about 2.9 million euro for the land, probably a bit under market value, but the government preferred it for the potential to develop the local economy. The assets used to belong to a bankrupt socialist electronics company called HTT Tesla, unrelated to the electric car maker. HTT Tesla has roots going back to 1919 and used to make telephone switchboards and radio receivers. It failed to survive privatization and the subsequent bankruptcy had caused the unemployment rate in its home city to skyrocket. Foxconn started this factory in order to service its Western European clients with Hewlett Packard, Sony, and Compaq has the Keystone customers. A workforce of five to 6,000 workers assembled desktops, laptops, and printers there. Within a single year, the Czech plant was cranking out 10,000 PCs a day. Foxconn Czechia became one of the country's top 10 largest companies in just three years. In terms of sales, it is probably the country's second biggest exporter after Skoda. Seven years later, in 2007, Foxconn outgrew its Pardubice site and built another factory in Kutnahora in central Bohemia. This new, more modern plant specializes in the production of servers, a very lucrative space. These two factories are the core of Foxconn's presence in Czechia and provide assembly, logistics, and administrative support for all markets in the EMEA region. State support is a consistent theme when it comes to anything related to Foxconn and its labor. The company routinely leverages whatever it can get from governments, not criticizing it, just pointing out that this is the nature of the business. The industry is famously cutthroat. 
Foxconn's incentives were the first made by the new Social Democratic government in the electronics industry since 1989. Foxconn chose the Czech Republic because placing its factories there would allow clients to avoid the EU's high tariff barriers and to be able to say that its products were made in the EU rather than made in China. The government was very much involved throughout the whole factory setup process. A division of the country's Ministry of Industry and Trade, Czech Invest, assisted Foxconn top management in selecting Pardubice for its first European factory. When the company set roots in Kutnohora, the city council facilitated the transaction. A series of tax incentives, including a 10-year tax grant, helped seal the deal. Furthermore, the city council helped mediate the company's relations with the populace as a whole. As I will mention later, this includes issues relating to labor unrest, and was very helpful. As is the situation with any company setting up shop in a new environment, both the Czechs and Foxconn CZ had to make plenty of adjustments to get comfortable with each other. When Foxconn first came to Pardubice, the townspeople were excited about the company's employment potential, but expectations had been too high. The low pay, 8 to 10,000 Czech crowns at the start, elicited some criticism, but not as much as the new work demands. Foxconn has, if I may say, a militaristic and regimented work culture. The work is unpredictable and can ramp up or down with little warning. People work 8 or 12 hour shifts, but there is a max cap of 48 hours with overtime. The night shifts are known for being relatively disruptive for those with families. The actual tasks to be done at the line can be learned pretty quickly, but it can also get very repetitive. Since the assembly workers need to keep a fast pace, about 40 seconds for each task, it can get physically exhausting. Thus, most of the line workers are relatively young, under 50. Just a few weeks after the plant first opened, the Czech daily newspaper ran a story titled Taiwanese Shock Czech Workers. It ran interviews with workers, those who formerly worked with Tesla and transitioned to Foxconn, with juicy quotes like, No matter who leaves the assembly line to go to the toilet or whatever, it has to be reported to the director. When they come back, they can't go straight back to their place, but instead have to wait until the next worker requests a bathroom break so that they can take their place on the assembly line. If you're caught waiting to get back to work, your salary goes down. People criticize Foxconn for not hiring enough workers and causing too many people to do too much overtime. It was worried that working conditions would become too much like those in China. It took some time for the company to change its ways. They replaced their Chinese managers with ones from Europe, and Czech managers were sent to China so that they can learn how they could adapt the work culture to suit European tastes. Over time, the partnership calmed down. A worker who worked at both HTT Tesla and Foxconn said, With the new Foxconn management, things had to get done and had to get done immediately. When Foxconn started, they expected to create in Pardubice something like in Shenzhen. Loyalty is important there. But here, things do not work that way, and people do not function like that. So, the Chinese were wrong. HTT Tesla had a trade union and a collective bargaining agreement from back in the days of socialism and came along with Foxconn's purchase in 2000. Having cut its teeth in China where trade unions were basically extensions of management, negotiation with a European trade union was new. Czechia's trade unions are also weak, though not to the same extent as in China. Union membership has declined since the fall of the Soviet Union, and labor legislation has largely been deregulated as part of the country's integration into the European Union. Foxconn at first refused to negotiate with the trade union and tried to replace it with its own human resources department. But bad press and mediation from the city government forced the company to the negotiation table. Soon thereafter, an agreement was made. One female worker said about the incident, both sides had to temper their demands, but I admit that the Taiwanese taught us a lesson. We met about halfway through. With that being said, labor relations in some places remain lacking. At best, the union has had minimal effect on the company's practical way of working. They did manage to negotiate wage increases and hour caps for their workers, 
but not much more. When workers in the Apple division tried to strike for better conditions and wages, Foxconn shut it down and shifted production elsewhere. As one former worker told it, Foxconn closed the division within half a year, and 330 people were dismissed. Mass dismissal should be announced at the labor office, but they did it in a clever way, because according to the law, mass dismissal is when a company dismisses 30 or more people. What Foxconn did is they dismissed 29 workers every month. Each month, regularly, they fired 29 people. Another issue has to do with the migrant workers. Foxconn CZ directly employs about half of its workers, the Czech, quote, core, so to call it, and sources the rest from job placement agencies. These are often economic migrants from countries like Vietnam, Mongolia, Bulgaria, Slovakia, Romania, and Poland. These agency workers make less than the full-timers and often enjoy less flexibility in work hours. They often cannot afford to get fired from said job, making them more accepting of changes and work demands from management. But, sadly, they are also first in line to be let go anyway, if and when the economy goes south. An example of this tiered system can be found in housing. Foxconn in China is famous for its big dorms. It allows the company to completely control the environment in which its workers do work, preventing behaviors that they deem to be unproductive. In 2001, a year after establishment, Foxconn tried to implement a collective dorm regime for its Czech workers, but local resistance caused them to change their mind. Now, local Czech employees can commute to the factory from their homes. But at the same time, the migrant workers stay in similar dormitories provided for them by the job placement agencies that brought them into the country. Czech trade unions try to do their best to protect these migrant workers in addition to the core, but the reality is that the trade union ultimately prioritizes the Czech core. As of recently, the union counts a declining membership of 250 to 300 workers across both factories. Foxconn has been in the Czech Republic for over 20 years now, and it seems like they're going to be staying for good. But the company needed to make vast adjustments to its own culture and way of work in order to adjust to European work styles. It had to deal with managing a vast, multicultural workforce while at the same time preserving the just-in-time advantages of its business strategy. Foxconn is favored by its customers because it can put together something with immense speed but they can also ramp down as needed whenever customers want, requiring them to fire workers to save on labor costs. Foxconn and its customers deal with this because they want the political and economic advantages of making stuff in Europe. The Czech Republic is not as labor-friendly or developed as other countries in Western Europe, but it is still considered to be part of the European Union. The Czech government takes advantage of this by having Foxconn provide jobs for a large portion of its population. But, many of those jobs go to irregular workers from outside of Europe. Like, not even Europe, like Mongolia or Vietnam, they're not Europe. So I guess that makes me wonder. Well anyway, as Foxconn expands far beyond China due to rising labor costs and shifting supply chains, it is going to have to strike similar balances in India, Brazil, Malaysia, and more. The company can do what it can to accommodate, its customers can do as many audits as they want, but the reality is that hard work over long hours is the human cost of having those beautiful but affordable tech gadgets that so many care for. And someone in the end has to do it. Alright everyone, take care of yourselves out there. Make sure to go watch that Koi Poo video. I really, really, really think they're cute. Alright, everyone take care of yourselves. See you later.